Hello everyone, in this video we will add device token auth to our rail 7 application and we will solve all the problems or all the errors that we will face during this process. Device token authentication gives us a multi-client and a secure token based authentication for rails. To install it we just need to add jam device token authentication and ram bundle install. And we also need to uncomment records as we would need to allow the, um, the cores that we would need to use. And here we would face our first errors that we will resolve together. Device token auth didn't update its version, oh, it was the latest version in Ruby Gems. So we would need to force uh, Rails to use the updated version from GitHub. We can do that by just copying the GitHub link from here. The add get and this link here now if we punt it install the error will be resolved and everything works fine after installing it we need to configure device token to to make it work um it, it provides us with a generator to just make everything simple and easy in one step in installation. We can just run rail generate device token auth install and that will create a user model and define the routes and include uh, uh, an important concern that we need to use in the application. But we need to add two uh, parameters, user class parameter and mount pass parameters. What are those? User class is the name of the class we need to use for our user authentication. Okay, and mount pass is just a place or the pass uh, that you need to add by talking of the paths or URLs or routes to it. This would create an initializer that would have all the configurations of device token us and a model as we just stated here it would be named as user model and routes concerns that would be included to our application migration file that will have all the, the, the informations needed to create the model the user model everything works fine so now let's see the migration uh, it would have the provider the UID encrypted password for user user info is just the place where you can configure your custom user data like uh, it's a username we might need it to be full name not name uh, nickname we need it to be username image email and we need uh, text for pio and uh, whatever customizations you need to add here let's run rails db migrate and here is the second problem the problem is that the um, device is not uh, known here for user class let's go to user model we would see that uh, uh, <clears throat> our user model is using device so to make it work i found a solution here we just need to add the extend device models in the user dot rb model so we can just add this line here extend device models and if we run the migration again everything would just work fine so let's continue configuring the application uh, after running race if migrate everything would be okay so we need to configure the following items depending on which one we would use we won't use OmniOS in this video so we will skip it and we would use cross origin request setting so let's read more here in this section it will um, give us the, the configurations or records configurations that we need to expose so uh, the gem works fine uh, so let's just do it in cores.rp here we uh, remember that we uncommented the records uh, gem so we would use it here the origin we need it to be asterisk so any origin can communicate with our application resources uh, we need uh, headers as any headers as any and methods all the methods but expose is not uh, in our application so we need to add this here everything would work fine let's run raid server and we need to um, try to log in we would use postman to test it let's just see the usage so uh, the first route is just slash 
post request registration request okay and it requires email password and password configuration so we can use this so let's uh, make uh, make this request okay this is um, the post request we need to send we would need to send that to uh, localhost 3000 slash op slash as uh, we said before op is uh, the prefix of all the requests uh, uh, that or, or the routes that uh, the bedroom provides okay so the um, the request is just to slash means that the request is for auth slash okay okay we need to send email password password confirmation and remember that we added full name bio and user name so we can send those to, to mustafa one okay let's make it as our username this is full name and all everything will seems to be okay let's send this request it's success we just uh, created our first user um but there is one problem we sent full name pio and username and uh, all those didn't uh, reflect anything here in the the user data so let's solve it it says here that accepted parameters uh, can be customized using the device parameter sanitizer so let's uh, just sanitize it just need to add the before action configure permitted parameters if device underscore controller to our application controller so let's add the before action and uh, whatever uh, parameters we need to sanitize so we need to sanitize uh, username bio and uh, image full name full name okay we need to sanitize all those let's try it again here let's just uh, change the okay okay let's try it with the same email and we would uh, i think we need to have an error here okay we have an error as uh, the email has already been taken okay so let's change the email Okay, Mustafa 2 and everything works fine we have now our full name username bio everything is here so okay uh, we just uh, created our account and uh, now uh, we need to just um, uh, communicate with the application using the token but where the token okay let's see here uh, the headers we got the headers here have some tokens it's access token token type client expiry uid and authorizations all those together represent the token that we need to send alongside with every request we would send to our application to fetch data to make a post request or whatever the logic you need to do to make sure uh, that uh, it works you can just add some resources to our application and test it so let's uh, generate phrase uh, generate scaffold uh, articles and articles would have uh, title and body okay let's try that and let's run rails db migrate rails console article dot create item item one body body one article two body two and exit and run raid server here we have um a get request we can send a get request to articles now we have to index all the articles we have and here we go we have two articles but let's add let's go to articles controller and add the uh, before action for action authenticate user so now we need to authenticate the user before uh, trying to access any article let's try to get articles again here and now we would have a problem we need to be signed in or signed up before continue 
So we need to send the, the token here with this request. You can try it. Uh, let's try adding access token. Copy it. And we need to go to this and add header. Uh, let's park edit. This is an old one. Let's add the new one. Okay, key value edit. So send again. And here is another problem with the device. Uh, it's uh, it says that um, session disabled session error. Your application has sessions it disabled. To write the session, you must first configure a session store. So uh, in a device uh, with uh, RAID 7, there is a new problem that occurs every time you need to use a device with uh, an API only applications and we can resolve it by just adding those lines until device update uh, its gem application initializer can just add this here and after that we need to restart the server and if we run the same request again remember that we send the token in this request now we can get our data again so it worked. Now let's look at another route like sign in route. Uh, we need to send email and password to sign in route, and uh, that's how we can get the, uh, the access token and the client ID to the headers and try to make another request after signing in. Okay, so let's sign in. We can make a new request to localhost 3000 slash sign in. But remember, it's not slash sign in, it's, it needs to be os slash sign in. As we said before, os is a prefix of any route given by the gem. So it would be a post request and you need to send the body, form data, email like mustafa1 at a.com and password like uh, uh, let's say one two three one two three four uh, this is a wrong password let's check it here is invalid long credentials please try again so let's make it a uh, right password one two three one two three and send request the the login is successfully and we got our user data now uh, alongside with the body we uh, we got our headers the token headers like access token, access uh, token type, client expiry, ID, authorization, we need all those. So copy those and we send to uh, article slash one to get the first article. You can just uh, change those. So we set the new token into the, the header and if we send the request, we can get the first article. Now, there is something I need to uh, make sure you understand. So let's take the same authorization parameters and token parameter and put it into another request this is the same okay let's send it to article i can get them but if we send them to another request again here is the error you need to sign in or sign up before continue what is this and why I'm having such an error? That's because uh, in initializer settings, which is the configurations of device token OS uh, gem, you can find that there is a parameter that called the change headers on each request. By default, the access token header will change after each request. And the client is the one who is responsible for keeping track of changing the token. So you are the one responsible for keeping track of the changing tokens. You can find that after each request we send uh, that the response would have the new tokens. You need to take all the, um, the, the parameters or the change parameters uh, from the headers and make it the new parameters of your new or the, your uh, next request. And after the next request, you would have to take the responses headers and update the new request with them. But 
if you are using angular you can just use ng token op or if you are using react you can just use jtoker and uh, those libraries would just do that out of the box if you would like to uh, just uh, stop this you can just uh, uh, change the, the, uh, the parameter change headers on each request to be false in the device token or be initialized and that's it for this video uh, if you like this video just let me know and if you have any uh, other questions uh, put them on the comments and uh, i hope you like this video thank you